Welcome, 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 welcome to my channel. I am Nels Dior. Um, Nels Dripping Sauce Squad, what's up? Welcome, thank you for joining, for tuning in, for clicking on my video. Um, I am back. I know it's been a while, guys, um, but I am back. Um, I have been healing, um, healing myself. Um, just been doing a lot of healing, um, getting my house in order, if you would say. Um, so, um, there will be some changes coming to my channel. There's been some changes in my life. Um, so, with that being said, I am going to just start off um, with just um, bringing some good vibrations to uh, the channel and to the air. So enjoy and um, once again just thank you for tuning in let's raise those vibrations guys and let's get ready because we are going to learn we're going to manifest our dreams we're going to get ready for our exam we're going to get ready to pass this um, exam and get ready and prepare for our license get ready and prepare for our our new business for our new journey for everything so um once again guys just welcome um bringing in good intentions good vibrations i ask that you come in with a clean mind and heart and if you love nails like i do that you are ready you're prepared and ready to learn okay y'all ready did y'all feel that energy felt that energy yes 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 i say i say so um we are going to be learning from i don't know if you guys have if you're new to my channel um go watch some of my previous videos because um i was introducing the new my lady nail technology um eighth edition so um, I was introducing my nail strip and sauce squads. I was trying to introduce you guys into the new book and I was giving you guys some time to get the book. So hopefully, you know, I done gave you guys more than enough time to get the book. So we are here. Um, I am still using Bookshelf Vital Source. Um, I don't know if you guys remember that, but um, if you don't, the website is bookshelf.vitalsource.com this is where i purchased my my lady uh, nail technology book um and it also came with uh the foundations um book as well just like uh the seventh edition came with the workbook so this is like the i guess this is the foundations workbook i guess you could say but we are we will be working on chapter eight guys and chapter eight is talking about um electric folly okay so um yes before we get started i just want to say i hope you guys are having wherever stage you are in your nail journey embrace it embrace it um because um it goes fast and before you know it it's just like man i've been in this game for this long and this long and it just seemed like class went by so quick so just embrace it right now i can say that i am in school you guys and um fingers crossed uh i graduate hopefully the beginning of September, um the beginning of September um but yeah I am currently in school to get my license my plan is to get my license and then work on my instructor license um but yes I am in school right now um I think we got like four more tests to go before we can take the practical the exam or whatever and I'm excited um I just I'm gonna do a video um, just on the things we've been learning because I have been getting footage so um, I don't want you guys thinking that I've completely left you out of my um, my school journey I have not I've been recording still because I do plan on making a video just showing you guys what um, 
what I've been doing, what I've been doing. So um, stay tuned for that as well. So let me not keep uh, blabbering, blabbering. Um, let's get into it, y'all. So chapter eight, electric filing. Okay, genius is one one percent inspiration and ninety nine percent perspiration. Thomas A. Edison. Wow, let's read that again. Genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Wow. Learning objectives. After, after completing this chapter, you will be able to explain the importance of electric filing for a nail technician, describe electric files, compare machine features when choosing an electric file, choose the proper bit for each service, demonstrate electric filing techniques, discuss electric filing for pedicures, recognize how to troubleshoot electric filing problems, lift safety tips for electric filing. Okay, before I go on, let me just say, I know as nail techs, um, when we're first beginning and starting the game, you know, they say the must haves for a beginner nail tech, and then it automatically go with um, an electric file. Yes, to speed up your services and, you know, you're going to need your electric file. But as a beginner nail tech, you do not necessarily need an, an e-file. You do not. You can get that sharp, crisp um, shape, you know, all of that with the hand file. Because that's how it was started. Before the e-files were, were here, there were the hand files. It was being done with hand files. So... You must know about the hand files and the grits about hand files before you go ahead and hop on into e-filing. Um, because certain hand files you cannot use on a natural nail. Um, depending on the grit of the file, you cannot use you cannot use on a natural nail. As with the e-files, certain bits you cannot use on a natural nail because they're only for um, um, for nail enhancements like acrylic and uh gel and stuff like that so certain things you have to you know you have to crawl before you walk guys okay many manufacturers and trade publications often educate on electric filing you can also find tutorials and videos on the internet now professionals should have a thorough understanding of electric filing because electric filing has become an important part of most services performed in salons today, including pedicures and natural nail care. Learning how to safely use an electric file with skill, understanding what each, what each bit is used for, and knowing safety techniques can enhance your services by providing you with more alternatives for achieving a desired result. Okay, it says describe electric files. There are several different types of electric files made specifically for nail services. A professional nail technician should never purchase a craft or hobby tool instead of a nail machine specifically designed for use in professional nail services. So, y'all can be thirsty. We, let's not say y'all, because we, we are nail technicians. I'm a nail technician. We, we are... We cannot be thirsty and go to Walmart and see a, a Dremel or something and be thirsty to use that on the nails because that's not what that's for. Certain tools that you find in the craft and hobby stores are for like wood crafts and you know art crafts, not not nails, not not the nails because the the vibrations of the tools are too high and it could cause damage to the nails. Micromotor machines. The e-file used in salons are known as micromotor machines because the motor is located in the handpiece. Okay, figure 8-1 shows us that the motor is located in the handpiece. Not the actual body, but the handpiece the motor is. The micromotor machines. The box that the handpiece plugs into is a transformer. This is a transformer which conducts the electricity from the wall plug to the machine. All manufacturers sell hand pieces and boxes separately, should you need to replace either one. There are many different brands and type of micromotor machines available for every budget. Craft or hobby tools are not designed for use on human nails and should never be used for nail services. 
They are manufactured for use on glass, metal, ceramic, wood, and plastic, not on human nails. Craft machines must be modified from their original factory, factory condition by either replacing the collet or adding a flex shaft adapter in order for these machines to be used with traditional nail bits. These bits need for craft machines have a larger shank size, uh, 1 8 or 3 12 millimeters, than professional nail bits, which is 132 or 0 0.79 millimeters. The vibration from the craft and hobby tools can be harmful to clients' nails, can interfere with proper curing for enhancement products, and may cause damage to your hand or wrist with long-term use. Bottom line, craft and hobby tools should never be used in salons. Okay, bottom line, y'all heard that. RPM speed. The speed of an electric file is measured in revolutions per minute. That's RPMs. So if you're looking, if you're looking on Amazon or if you're on a website and it says, oh, 35,000 RPMs, that means the revolutions, RPMs means revolutions per minute. This is the number of times in a minute that the bit spins in a complete circle. Machines vary in RPM capacity between 0 and 35,000 and the motor works in the middle of the range from 0 to the highest number. Think of RPM as the speed speedometer in a car. Just as you do not drive your car at the highest number on a speedometer, you will rarely use the electric file on its highest speed. Working in the middle range of its capacity prolongs the working life of the motor. Okay, figure 8-2 is showing us nail damage caused by improper use of electric file, also known um, that kind of looks like a ring of fire. Um, that could be caused by um, too much pressure, um, the wrong bit, uh, the speed could be too high up on it. It could be multiple reasons. Okay, it says power and torque. Torque is understood as the power of the machine or its ability to keep turning when you are applying pressure during filing. Machines vary in torque and RPM, and it is important to know your machine's capacity. The speed that you use is related to the strength or power torque of the machine, the density, the hardness of the product you are working on, and the type of bit that you are using. More powerful machines have larger and stronger motors, high torques, so they accomplish more at lower speeds. This means you may work at lower speeds. Less powerful machines have less powerful motors and smaller, lighter hand pieces, so you will often use them at higher speeds and possibly use a more aggressive bit. If your hand piece slows down or stops rotating when you apply pressure, you are working at too low a speed. If you mostly use your machine on enhancement products like liquid and powder systems or UV LED hard gel products, you should look for more powerful machines with the higher RPMs. Um, so the higher RPMs, like the 35,000 RPMs, um, electric files vary between 5,000 and 35,000 RPMs, but there are some machines that top out at 20,000 RPMs. More powerful motors are stronger and file better on harder enhancement products with less effort and less pressure. Compare machine features when choosing an electric file. When choosing an electric file, evalu evaluate your wants, needs, and budget. If you are going to use your machine for both enhancement and pedicure services, be sure that you get a powerful machine with high RPMs. Budget will be the most important factor when you first get out of school. Attend trade shows, visit distribution. Visit distributors or take a class before investing in a machine. Be sure to test machines before you buy one. Purchase the best machine you can afford. It is the most valuable tool you will use in nail services. If your budget is limited, purchase a less ex expensive machine that will work for now, but then invest in a higher quality machine later. Be sure to get the best machine for your money and investigate features before you buy. Okay, machine features. Here are some features to look for when choosing a machine. 
Forward and reverse. Does the machine have both? Do you need both? Most often you will not. However, some left-handed technicians use their machines in reverse. Chuck. Most hand pieces have a twist lock chuck for changing bits. However, there are some that are different. Some handheld machines requ require a pin or key that must be put into a hole while using a wrench to open the chunk to replace and remove the bit. There are also machines in which you simply push the bit in and pull it out. If the chunk is not firmly locked after putting the bit in, your machine may not work when turning it on. If this happens, simply open it and then close the chunk firmly until you hear it click. Foot pedal. There are two types of foot pedals, so be sure to ask Oops. Hold on, guys. I don't know what I just did. Okay. Where did I go? Okay. Be sure to ask. Guys, I so, like, forgot where I was. Because I'm hearing my babies downstairs, and I'm trying to tell them that I can hear them in the background. And I know I was talking about foot pedals. Before you buy. Okay, let's just start at number two. Variable speed. The pedal works like the accelerator in a car. As you press down, the machine speed increases. As you reduce pressure, the speed decreases. You set the maximum speed on the box on your desk, and this limits the foot pedal from going any faster. For example, if you have a 30,000 RPM machine and your floor, you floor the foot pedal, it will speed up to 30,000 RPMs, which is less likely faster than you need. Setting the maximum speed at 25,000 RPMs will limit the foot pedal when floored. RPMs. What is the machine's highest and lowest RPM? This is vital to understand how powerful it is and will be a factor in a bit selection. Variable speed control. This means that the hand piece maintains its set RPM when pressure is applied during fouling instead of slowing or bogging down when pressure is applied during use. The machine speeds up to maintain the same RPMs that you set it to. This can be a bit unnerving when you first experience it, but the machine is not fact racing or out of control. Comfortable hand piece. Consider its weight, size, and shape. Comfort is key. Because you will use this tool for almost every service that you provide, it must feel good in your hand. You will also want a handpiece with virtually no vibration. Closed casing handpiece. Some handpieces have slots or openings that allow dust and debris to get inside the file. This can damage the motor. Closed casings can prolong the life of your machine. Be sure to purchase a machine that does not have any opening sections. Warranty. Is there, a is there a manufacturer's warranty? How long is the warranty? What does it cover? Is it possible to buy an extended warranty? Maintenance. Regular maintenance and care will extend the useful life of the machine. Check with the manufacturers about recommended handpiece cleaning, replacement of cords, and how often the machine should be serviced. How long does it take to get the machine back if sent in for repair or service? Is there a loaner program? Sometimes it is helpful to have a second machine for backup if you send your primary machine in for a service or repair. It is a good idea to send your machine in for service just before you go on vacation. That way you won't miss out on using it. Check in. Okay. Check in guys. What are three factors factors determine what electric file you should purchase what are the three i'm gonna get y'all one budget budget is one what's another one y'all remember use was use one of them What 
What was it, guys? Yeah, your wants, your needs, and your budgets. Those are the three things. So not the use. I was wrong. Your wants, your needs, and your budgets. Okay? List three features to look for when choosing an electric file. One, um, you want to check the RPMs. Um, two, you want to check to see if uh, it has forward and reverse. Do you need forward and reverse? Um, three, the foot pedal. Do you like using the foot pedal or do you like using the handpiece? Um, those are three things. Okay, choose the proper bit for each service. Electric file bits come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and styles. The sheer number of bits that are available can be confusing when you are trying to select the right one for a particular service. Knowing which bit to use will ensure the client's safety as well as save you time and money. An electric file should run smoothly without excessive vibration. Wobbling or bent bits, bits can harm the electric file, can cause damage to the client's nail, and may cause the nail professional to develop a cumulative trauma disorder, CTD. Hand pieces or bits that vibrate excessively increase the risk of injury to your hand and or wrist. If your hand piece creates excessive vibration, it should be serviced immediately. Remember, repetitive motion of any type, including those used while electric filing, can cause repetitive trauma disorders such as CTD. If you develop symptoms related to any type of repetitive trauma disorder, you should consult a physician for a diagnosis and treatment. The anatomy of a bit. When choosing bits, look for the following. Um, concentric, concentric bits. They are balanced bits that do not wobble or vibrate. Bits that wobble or vibrate when spinning can damage the inside of your handpiece and damage the client's nail. Surface smoothness. Are the particles on the bit evenly distributed? If the particles are larger in some areas, the bit will scratch the nail surface as you file instead of refining it. Edges. Many bits are cut with finished edges so they are not sharp on the top. Feel the edges of the bits before purchasing a bit. Look for beleveled edges that are not sharp. Grits. For hand files, is measured by the number of abrasive particles per square inch. Higher number grits have particles that are smaller and finer. The coarser the grit, the lower the grit number will be, and the larger each individual piece of grit will be per square inch. Bits range from extra fine to coarse. However, how smooth or coarse an e-file bit is depends on what it is made of and what it is designed for. For example, a medium sanding band will not be the same as a medium diamond bit or a medium Swiss carbide bit. Shank. A shank is a standard size uh, for nail machines, which is a 3032. Electric files used for crafts are usually a 1 8 and will not fit a professional electric file. Types of bits. There are four main types of bits used in salon services. There are four main types of bits used in a salon service. Diamond, carbide, silicone, and natural. However, there is a great variety of bits and bit shapes available for specific applications. Diamond bits are made from both natural and synthetic diamond particles that are adhered to a metal surface of the bit. Diamond bits chip the surface of product when filing and can be used in a back and forth motion. Okay, so a lot of people get confused on um, when they're doing the e-filing and they might be trying to do the back and forth motion and the file will turn and it might go off the nail or roll off the nail. Diamond bits, you can do the back and forth motion on a diamond bit. As long as you're controlling your speed, as long as your speed is correct, you're holding the, the proper position of the file correct, um, you're, you should be able to do the back and forth motion. But when you are doing the back and, back and forth motion, make sure you are still picking up the file off the nail um, because that will cause the rollingness because the file is already rolling in forward motion and for you to 
force it to go in the opposite direction is going to cause it to roll off, if that makes sense. Most commonly used grits is medium. Diamond bits vary in size, shape, quality, and price. Higher quality diamonds bits <clears throat> last longer and give a better result than cheaper, less quality bits, which save both time and money. Carbide bits are made, made of carbide metal and come in different shapes, sizes, and grits. The surface of the bits have grooves, which are called flutes, which save the surface of the products as they file. Okay? The surface of the bits have grooves, which are called flutes. So when y'all see those little indentations on the carbide bits, those little sharp little long-looking shapes, um, they are called flutes. And they shave the surface of the product as they file, which reduces the dust. Wow, I didn't know that. The wider the space between flutes, the coarser the bit, and the coarser the flutes, the finer the bit. Corbides sometimes have coatings applied to enhance filing and are cross-cut so that it can be used in a back-and-forth filing motion. So corbide bits can be used in a back-and-forth filing motion as well, rather than just a one direction. Specialty carbide bits can be used to remove gel polish from enhancement products as well as to prep a product for maintenance services. Swift carbide bits are made in Switzerland and usually have rounded ends for safety. These are excellent for beginners because they are rounded ends reduce the chance of cutting the skin. Swiss carbides or cross cut can be used in back and forth motion and forward and reverse and give very smooth filing results. Okay, figure 8 4 is showing us what diamond bits is. You can find these regular diamond bits in, let's say, if you purchase the e file, um, 9 times out of 10, it will come with like a little 5 piece um, bit that you can put in your uh, file. And they will be the diamond bits. They'll look like that. And one will come with what we call a Dremel. And the Dremel is what we place the sandy bands on. Figure A5 is showing us a carbide bit. Um, sometimes uh, a lot of carbide bits, you'll see, you'll see the, um, have you guys seen the acrylic carbide bits? They're the white. They're the white bits. They're kind of made like this, but they're white. Those are still carbide, even though they're acrylic. Okay, silicone bits feel a bit like pencil erasers with grits ranging from coarse to fine. Silicone bits should just lightly skim the surface of the nail to remove excess non-living cuticle or to shine natural nail and artificial nails. Medium grits is best used on natural nails. Natural camoise, cotton, and goat hair bits. Camoise, cotton, and goat hair bits can be used to apply buffing creams and to buff natural nails and enhance the products to a high gloss finish. Camoise are available in a natural synthetic or leather. Goat hair bits are great for removing dust or chrome powders from the skin around the nail after gel sealers are applied and cured. <coughs> tapered barrel bits the shorter cone bit fine is designed with a flat top it can be used to shape the top surface of the nail enhancement on small nails at a flat angle and at the cuticle and sidewalls it also serves to gently prep the cuticle area for a fill french fill bits was designed to use sideways to carve a V into the small line area during a pink and white backfill procedure. Made in diamond style, only these bits come in several sizes. Okay, natural nail disc um, it has a diamond surface that's used as a flat on the tip to shorten the shape of the free edge. The outer edge is made of metal or plastic and acts as a safety edge when you file. Pedicure bits are usually cone-shaped, made of a diamond or a sapphire material. 
They work best for smoothing, contouring, dry, callous skin. Most come with longer shanks. Some have hollow centers to ensure that they do not heat up too quickly. You may also find some pedicure bits with rounded edges on top. These can be used along sides of the toenail on callous skin. Pedicure bits are used on a slow or medium speed. They should, not, they should be used carefully in one direction only, so as, so as not to cause any discomfort to the client. This bit is also perfect for use on hand callus and for getting into difficult spots on the feet that a large foot file cannot. Okay. Are you guys still with me? Make sure you hit that like button for me. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Hit that like button for me. Y'all still woke? Are y'all learning? I did not know that they had all of these different type of bits. Like, I'm so used to the the regular bits for, you know, just the cuticle and for, you know, the carbide bits and, you know, all of those. But I did not know about the the natural nail disc. And I also didn't know about the, the V-cut uh, for the um, French field bit. I did not know about that. Even though I've seen that one. I've seen it, but I just didn't know what it was for. So that is good to know, you know, what it's for. I wouldn't mind trying that out one day. Let me go. If you guys have tried that bit out, let me know in the comments and let me know what you think. Do you like that or do you like the new style of how they're doing the um, the V-line for the, um, the French nails? You know, like the new tool they have, the V-cutters and the smile line cutters. All right. Prepper bits or diamond prepper bits are similar to a taper barrel bit, but slightly smaller. Prepper bits come in various grits. It is recommended that you use a fine grit on a natural nail to prep it at the cuticle area for nail enhancements. Work. Mandrels. Remember, I guys. Remember, I told you that a mandrel will come in your e-file bit. It is the metal or rubber bit that is inserted into the hand piece. Sanding on arbor bands are slipped over the mandrels. So don't try to use a mandrel without a sand, without a sanding band. This is the mandrel. You will need a sanding band for your mandrel. Please do not put this on someone's natural nail. Please do not. These are one use only paper bits that slip onto the mandrel. These bits are made of abrasive paper just like hand files and cannot be disinfected. Sandy bands are generally are used for shortening and shaping the top surfaces of the nail or removing a gel sealant from enhancement products. These bits should not be used on the natural nail. Why? It say these bits should not be used on a natural nail as they can easily cause damage to the nails. They generate very high heat and high amounts of dust. The dust particles from the arbor bands are very small. Enter your breathing, enter your breathing zone and you stay airborne longer than heavier particles. For safety reasons, you should not use these without using a dust extractor system. Wow, y'all like... I just learned, I like, I felt like this, this paragraph just hit me on top of the head. Do y'all know how many times, and I noticed that when I am using my sanding band, just the dust from using it, out of everything else I use, when I'm using that sanding band, just the dust that comes from, that extracts from it. Wow. Wow. So, guys, we, we got to start using our dust extractor. If we don't have one, we need to be getting one. We need some type of air purifier, a dust extractor system, something to get those particles out the air so we're not breathing that crap in. And let's make sure we do have on our mask, guys. And your client as well. 
Okay, but I'm not, okay, question, my question is, why can't we, because they use very high heat, but I still use, I still use mine on a natural nail, I just, my RPMs be at like a four, so, I'm pretty sure that's okay. Jewelry and specialty bits. A jewelry bit is a long, slender carbide bit configured to drill a hole into the free edge of a nail enhancement to attach nail jewelry. Only use jewelry bits on the extended free edge of the nail and never on the nail bed. Other specialty bits have a small carbide or diamond ball on the end. Alright, so where was we um, disinfecting metal bits? Disinfectable metal bits must be cleaned and disinfected in the same way that you would clean and disinfect other multi-use tools and implements such as nippers, manicure tools. Never use a dirty bit. Be sure to remove a dirty bit from the hand piece of your electric file when the file is not being used. Replace the dirty bit with a blank as part of your cleanup in between every client. Wash and disinfect each bit used on clients between every service following the steps described in procedure 8-1 cleaning and disinfecting metal file bits all right so you guys should know how to clean and disinfect your bits uh, just as the same way um, we learned earlier with cleaning uh, your tools and implements we already know uh, you must wash and scrub the debris and uh, dirt off first before you uh, go into the disinfection process. So let's just make sure we all know how to do that um, first. We're not going to do the check-in. Um, you guys are welcome to do that on your own just to stay on top um, of what we're learning. Um, let's do read this caution, though. It says, Caution. Disinfectants must never be allowed to come into contact with the skin. If your disinfectant container does not have a lift tray or basket, always remove the implements with tongs or tweezers. Always wear gloves to prevent your fingers from contacting disinfect solution. Um, me, I must admit that I'm not always uh, having on gloves or I'm not always using a tongue or tweezers when um, removing my stuff my basket out the um, disinfected tray um, I have to start I really do okay so if I can I do want to add a little um, cleaning disinfecting video on just how to clean and disinfect your files and bits um, did you know leaving a file bit in disinfecting solution for more than 10 minutes at a time can cause it to rust? Yes, I did. It happened to me before I left some bits overnight and had to throw them away the next morning because they were, all of them weren't rusted, but um, it did cause the edges or the sharpness to dull out. So, yes, I did know that. All right, glue a nail tip onto a dowel or round clothespin and hold the dowel as you would a client's finger. Practice on a bare tip with no enhancement until you have gained confidence in your abilities. You need to feel the gentle pressure you should use when filing on a bare tip before applying enhancement products. Once you have gained some experience with the machine, apply an enhancement product and practice on a classmate or a salon mate who can give you honest feedback about your technique. It is important that you are comfortable holding the handpiece while using the bits at a correct angle and speed so you do not injure the client. The more you work with your electric file, the more comfortable and skilled you will become. So yeah, that is a, a technique. If you do have a dowel, um, those dowels are the little, are the wooden um, slender um, shaped uh, wood pieces, um, sometimes you'll get them in your nail kits, sometimes you won't. Um, you can also use your trainer hand if you have trainer hands. And you can also use what everyone should have in their home or should have, I believe, unless you're um, vegan, <laughs> um, is an egg. Um, you can use an egg. I would say a brown egg. Um, so that you can see the surface of the brownness um, being removed. So you will use, you will have the egg, the brown egg, and you will use your e-file 
um, on the lowest setting um, to just learn the, the pressure and the, the lightness and the weight of your e-file and, you know, how much pressure you should be applying, how much pressure you should be not applying, and stuff like that. Because with the egg, you have to be gentle because if you're applying too much pressure, it's going to crack. So you will think of that egg as the nail plate, as your client's nail plate. Techniques to practice. Okay, hand balancing and fulcrum finger. Number one, sit up straight at your table with your feet flat on the floor. Two, hold your hand piece like a pencil for comfort and control. Place your forearm on the table to make sure your hands are stable. Four, use a firm, steady grip. Do not use a tight grip as your hands may begin to cramp. Balance your hands by using the pinky finger as the fulcrum finger and the finger or balancing point that braces your hands together when you are applying nail looker or polish. This occurs when you balance the tip of one pinky finger to the tip of one pinky finger or the other hand as you work and ensures that your hand and the e-file are working as one unit braced together. This will give you more control of the hand piece and bit as you work. Guys, this right here is very important. Being a nail tech, balancing, um, that is very important. I remember um, when I first, first started, um, and I used to be like, how do they, how, it was hard for me to balance my pinkies um, together, how they have it on the picture. Um, but once I got it, and once I started practicing it and constantly using it when every, when I did every service, whether it was just pushing a cuticle back, whether it was filing or polishing, I I, I used the full chrome because that's what it's called, the full chrome finger. Um, it's, go, it's what's going to help you balance. It's, go, it's what's going to help you polish. It's what's going to help you get that perfect A-line, that smile line. It's what's going to help you with your nail art. Um, so it's, it's very important to practice that fulcrum finger and balancing it out. Um, it'll help you with your shaking. If you're trying to balance getting your, even when getting your powder out, have that, that your fulcrum finger out, place it on your, um, on your jaw when you're getting your powder out. That helps a lot too. So you can measure how much powder you need. Um, examine and mark the dial. Most electric files do not have an RPM chart on the variable speed dial, so it is up to you to dissect your dial and know where the best speeds are. You may want to mark the dial for a 0 to 35 RPM machine. Dissect your dial for slow, medium, and fast speeds. Okay, a, uh, table A-1 is just showing you for surface work, you will want to use a fast type of setting speed. For maintenance work, um, either like cuticle uh, maintenance and stuff like that, you'll use a medium to slow um, speed. All right, inserting the bit. Not all e-files, um, the way you insert the bit are the same. Um, some are different. I do have a portable hand file that I use. Um, it's more of a be beginner's hand file. Um, that I was putting in my one-on-one uh, -on -one nail kits. Um, the way you insert that bill, um, that bit, sorry, uh, you just place the bit inside the hole, the top of the barrel, um, and you push it down. You don't have to unsnap or twist or unlock or nothing like that because it's it's a smaller hand file, um, so. You don't have to do too much to it. You put it in, and it automatically has a grip, um, the tolerance that locks the bit in. Um, insert a barrel or a bit or a sanding band into the hand piece, leaving a slight neck on the shank of the bit. Um, if you can see right there, they do have a little neck that's left out. Depending on how long uh, your client's nails is will also depends on how long you need to have that neck as well. Um, sometimes if you have a client that has a real, that has real long nails, that want real long nails, you might have to just push that, um, bit out a little further so that it can reach all the way up to, um, wherever you're trying to get on the nail. If it is a twist lock chunk, lock the bit into place. If it is a push chunk, check the security of the bit. So that's what I had. It was called a push chunk. You just push it in and you just, um, check the security of it to make sure it's not loose and uh, that it won't fall out. 
Practice bit angles. Number one, with the machine off, practice. Holding the bit in the center of the nail and moving the, the file from right to left. Picking up the bit and returning it to the right side of the nail, then repeating this step. Holding the bit flat to the nail, making contact with the center of the bit. Repeat the, re repeat the placements in step one above using the top of the bit on the bottom of the nail. Repeat the, repeat the placements in step one above using the top of the bit on the top, not the cuticle of the nail. Okay, turn on the machine. I'm not going to read through all of that. It's just telling you how to turn on the machine and it's just telling you how to practice with the machine on. Okay, you guys can read all of that yourselves because I do not want to have this video too long. There's another tip. Watch the dust. The dust will tell you where you are making contact with the nail. Every so often, stop the electric file and use a nail brush to remove the dust before continuing. Important things to remember. Use the correct bit angle when using an electric file. It is important to always keep the bit flat and parallel with the nail you are working on to avoid causing damage to the nail. Use the downward angle for the bottom of the nail. Flat to the nail in the center, slightly angled up at the top of the nail, not the cuticle area. Use the safety bit at the cuticle, very gentle. Avoid rings of fire. Remember I showed you guys... Um, Earlier on the other page, the ring of fire, um, it was caused from maybe um, applying too much pressure or the speed being too high or maybe using the wrong bit. It says avoid rings of fires. Rings of fires are caused by holding flat tip bits at the wrong angle, especially at the cuticle area, which allows the edge of the bit to dig into the surface of the nail. This can cause damage to the natural nail. Choose the correct speed. Be sure to use a safe working speed. Higher speeds allow you to use less pressure. If the bit grabs and wraps around the finger, your filing pressure is incorrect. If the speed of the electric file bogs down, the speed is too low. Uh, when it says bogs down, it means just stopping in the middle of your filing. If, it, if you apply the pressure and it stops, your speed is too low. So you might want to just um, turn it up a notch. Nail enhancement maintenance. Maintenance is a term used when a nail enhancement needs to be serviced after two or more weeks. From the initial application of the product, the service accomplished two goals. The first goal is to apply the enhancement product onto the new growth of the nail, commonly referred to as a fill or a backfill, also um, as a rebalance as well, and then to structurally correct the nail to ensure its strength, shape, durability, commonly referred to as a feel or a rebalance. Yep, so like I said. To prepare nail enhancements for a maintenance service, use a medium bit to smooth old product in the growth area of the nail. Keep the bit parallel to the nail and reduce the product down to the natural nail without touching the nail itself. Use the bit with a round-tipped safety edge for this procedure. So right there, it's showing us a backfill bit if someone was coming, coming in to get some maintenance and they needed a backfill. That's what they would use. Okay, maintenance services for a two-colored French <gasps> manicure. Okay, this is the part I really need to pay attention to. Um, because, as you know, ombre nails are trending. Color powder polymer is trending. So we are getting a lot of clients that want the color acrylic, which requires us, when they're coming in for a maintenance, which requires us to remove all of that old product. Um, this right here, I can admit that um, it'll take it takes me some time because... I believe I'm not properly using the correct bit to remove um, the product in a correct amount of time. So let's read. A backfill, the first aspect of the maintenance service, can be performed in a variety of ways. Some nail techs prefer to reduce the entire nail and apply a new layer of white product at the tip. Others prefer to thin the product at the growth area and carve new smile lines at the free edge. Either can be done with any shape. 
round tip bit. The purpose is to reshape the apex of the nail that has offset the balance when it has grown out so it remains thin at the tip and cuticle area. This provides strength in the center of the nail. Be careful not to touch the natural nail when filing. Focus on the enhancement product as you reduce it at the cuticle area. After you have prepped the nails for maintenance, remove the dust with a clean, dry, disinfectant nail brush. Use a medium barrel bit or a Swiss carbide bit on the tips to thin down the thickness from the stress area to the tip. Remove 75% of the product at an angle. Use your bit back and forth from side to side so the tip of the nails are all thinned evenly. When you replace the product, the color and density should be consistent. Backfill barrel bits come in different sizes, one week, two week, half barrel, and French fill bits. They can all perform same task. You should decide which one you will prefer to use. Backfills also can be done with full barrel bits, which are big enough to cut and remove remainder of the tip product without your having to change bits. The choice is yours. Repairing cracks. Use a flat tip barrel backfill bit or a bullet bit and replace it sideways into the crack. So slowly bevel a trench with the body of the bit, exposing the crack so that the new product can fill in the groove and reinforce that area. Removing lifted product. Never trim or remove loose nail enhancement products with a pair of nippers. It causes the remaining product, which may be not loose, to pull away from the healthy nail, causing damage to the nail plate. There are several bits that can, that can be used to remove the lifted areas and loosen products safely when used at a safe angle. Shaping the top surface. You may use a variety of bits, barrel bit, sander, or taper, or taper barrel to shape the top surface of nail products. Place the bit flat on the nail. Caution, never use a sander on the natural nail or to remove cuticle tissue from the nail plate. Wow, and that gets done a lot. You see, I see a lot of nail techs, they use the sanding band on the natural nail. I even do it. I can admit, I even do it. But it's the very fine sanding band. Okay, it talks about shorting the nails. Um, using a medium or coarse bit, uh, you will hold the bit at the tip of the nail at a 90 degree angle, making sure you have a firm grip. Um, use a faster RPM to quickly move back, back and forth while pushing in toward the nail on the free edge. Cuticle work, using a medium silicone bit on a low speed, gently remove non-living tissue from the nail plate, moving back and forth slowly from left to right. Never use a metal bit on the natural nail. Shaping C curves, uh, we um, know about that. Most of you should know about that, how you place the um, bit up under the nail. Um, make sure you're using uh, either a taper bit or a full size bit. Um, depending on the size of the underside of the C curve, you're refining. Finishing graduating grits is the key to finishing nail without leaving scratches. Graduate bits come from coarser to finer as with handheld abrasives to remove the dust each time in between changing bits as you graduate. This will keep you from scratching the surface and give a smoother finish. Buffing oils can enhance your finish work by reducing heat and hold dust on the surface of the bit. Using buffing oils sparingly as they can seep up the neck of the bit into the handpiece and cause damage. Rub the oil into, on, into the nails after the buffering is complete. It is important to remove all oil before polishing or using UV LED gel sealants for better adhesion. High shine buffing. After filing to a smooth finish, nail enhancements can be shined with a buffing bit and buffing cream. Lift the bit frequently and do not apply too much pressure. These bits can heat up quickly and burn your client. If your buffing does not produce a high gloss, then you did not file the nail smooth enough before buffing. OK, 
Okay, on natural nail work, here it goes. It's talking about the sanding bands, guys. You should never use a metal bit or sanding band on the natural nail plate unless you have experience. Okay, thank you. Make it clear, make it clear. Unless you have experience carrying out this procedure safely, you can use a natural nail rubber synthetic bit to prep the nail plate. Okay, so it's, okay, you're answering my questions for me because I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. I was using sanding bands on the natural nail plate. Everyone's using, I see a lot of people using it. You can use a natural nail rubber synthetic bit to prep the nail plate by pushing gently toward the cuticle. This procedure removes any non-living tissue on the nail plate safely. You can use a natural nail bit to smooth the surface of the natural nail plate. Use a slow, slow speed and hold the bit flat to the nail. Okay, there's a mini procedure. I'm going to try to get some type of um, activity or a mini procedure in this video okay this one is just talking about your natural nails um, yeah it's just showing you how to just how to practice with your e-file on the natural nail okay all right, let's talk about UV LED gels. For the most part, when using an electric file on light cured gel products, the procedures and bits are the same as with liquid and powder acrylic products. However, there are some things to take into consideration when filing on gel products. While gels are a softer product than traditional acrylics, they are also denser. This makes them more difficult to remove by hand filing. Apply less pressure down during filing. Okay, um, use a slightly lower speed than with traditional liquid and powder acrylic products. When choosing bits, consider the thickness of the enhancement. Use less aggressive bits than with traditional acrylic products or specialty bits designed for use on light cured gel products. Do not use drilling solutions or oil with light cured gel products or before applying a gel sealer or light activated top coat. Okay, let's read that again because they just went across and just went away do not use drilling solution so they have a drilling solution or oil with light cured gel products so if you have any products that you have to cure in the light any gel products don't use a drilling solution or do not use an oil before applying your top coat. Okay, see, I, <laughs> I had to make that make sense, squad. I had to make that make sense. Okay, so it's saying they have a drilling solution out there, and then they do have oil. So if you are using this oil or this drilling solution, um, do not, do not use it before um, applying your top coat. So, if you're going to put cuticle oil onto the, um, your client's nails, do not put it on there before applying the top coat. When backfilling gels, be sure to refine the smile line to ensure that when the white or colored gel is applied, the smile line is crisp and clear. Not all UV LED gels can be dissolved with acetone or gel solvents. So bits must be either manually cleaned with a brush or put into an ultrasonic cleaner to remove debris before disinfecting. Hard gels. To remove hard gels, these bits should be used. A diamond bit um, in medium, a corbide bits, medium or fine grit, um, Swiss, I mean Swiss corbide bits, of course, most have blue band. So hard gels will be like uh, poly gel and hard gels and stuff like that. Um, you would use a diamond corbide or Swiss corbide. There's another mini procedure 
um, removing hard gel. And we're going to, matter of fact, guys, we're going to do all of this. It really is. Um, it's talking about gel polish. If you use gel polish on the natural nails over acrylic or UVD gel products, follow manufacturer's instructions for removing it. Most gel polishes products will soak off with acetone, but you can <coughs> but can be carefully removed from acrylic or UV gel products by using an electric file. So if you are using gel uh, polish and you want to remove it from acrylic or an acrylic product, acrylic nail, um, I would suggest not using acetone because the acetone will um, start in, it will melt your nail. Um, so, yeah, using your e-file will remove that gel polish, and it will remove it probably just as faster. There's also another mini procedure. I will try to get all of these mini procedures in, guys, um, so that you guys can actually see what they're talking about. Um, and this one is removing gel polish from a hard gel or an acrylic product, which we all should know how to do pretty simple there's a check-in um, discuss electric filing for pedicures smoothing dry rough skin on the feet is easy and efficient with pedicure bits whether you perform the pedicure first or last be sure the feet are soft and dry before you start work on the callus keep these guidelines in mind when using electric filing during a pedicure pedicure bits come in a Varying types and materials. Diamond, stainless steel, sapphire, ruby bits can all be used to shorten toenails and reduce thick areas of skin or callusing. Sandy bands or sleeves are not recommended for pedicure services. As the dust generated from these is small, cannot always be seen with the human eye, and can remain airborne long after you can see it. Pedicure bits can be used with various types of exfoliating or callus reduction creams and lotions. But these can clog the surface of the bit quickly. Okay, if you use a callus reduction cream or spray, apply it to thickened areas of the foot. Then rinse and scrub those areas thoroughly before using any pedicure bit. Before continuing, it is very important to make sure feet are fully dry before filing. So if we are using an e-file... Um, we want to make sure when removing the callus and when um, using the e-file that it is dry. Um, and do not use a sanding band on the pedicures because of the, um, the many particles and dust that comes from the sanding bands. Um, and it is airborne and can still be in the air. Um, keep multiple pedicure bits so that one is always clean, disinfected, and ready to use. I try to keep three. Um, that way, if I'm using one, and then maybe one's being disinfected, and then I have one that's clean, ready to go. Um, I try to keep multiple. You, as a nail tech, will want to keep multiples of everything. Um, if you are doing manicures and pedicures, you want to my, maybe have... Um, implements and tools for your manicure services and then for your pedicure services. Um, that way, you know, you don't have to wait. If you're if some are, are needing disinfected, you don't have to wait till they're fully clean and disinfected. You can just have those being cleaned and disinfected while you are getting the new ones out and ready to use. Um, use your pedicure bit in one direction to reduce callus. 70 to 80 percent using the bit slowly and lifting the bit frequently will keep it from getting hot causing discomfort to the client pedicure bits can be used anywhere on the foot where there is callus including the skin on the sides of the toenails and under the toes use care not to remove too much callus or thickened skin remember that callus is there for a reason it protects the foot removing too much could cause harm to the client Yes, guys, um, be careful with that. Um, a lot of us go into the nail salons not knowing what can be used in the nail salon and what cannot be used in the nail, in the nail salon. Um, we just go and we just think, oh, I want my nails done and my feet done. The polish is pretty. It's neat. Mm, 
they did a good job. No, it's more to that. It is more to that. Um, know what implements and tools they're using. Certain states um, have um, guidelines, certain things you cannot use in the nail salons and the beauty industries. Um, some are prohibited. Certain foot files are prohibited. We cannot use certain things we cannot use. So just just know your know your stuff too. As nail technicians and as clients, know what your know what your technician is um doing, know what products she's using, know what you're allergic to, know what you don't like. I mean, just know. Cause it's important. It's very important. Um we a lot of times give our money to these nail salons and nine times out of ten a lot of them don't even care if you want to be real they don't care um a lot of them just look at it as the money they don't care if our our toenails are is healthy or not they're timing it oh my gosh we got to do better that was that was my reason for being in the nail. Um, that was really my reason for getting back into the nail game. Um, I remember um, I would just, I would travel. I didn't have a car back then, so I was doing tr- uh, public transportation. And I would have to travel 45 minutes plus um, there and back to get my nails done, and I, I would like it to go there because they did a good job. They polished real pretty and all of that, but I wasn't paying attention to, are they disinfecting their tools correctly, um, or are we having a good conversation, like the atmosphere, the customer service. Like, no, when I think of getting my nails done, when I think of beauty and being pampered, I want to laugh, I want to talk, I want to, or vent. If it's just a day where I need to vent, like, I, I want to do that. I don't want to be looked as just a number or a seat or, you know, another hand. Or To me, it's it's more to it. It's more to it. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to keep going on. And I'm, I know I'm going off subject, guys, but it's, it's important to know. It, it really is. Um, but without me going too much further, I was just saying that, Removing too much callus will cause even more callus to come back on your feet. So a lot of you, um, be careful when they are removing that callus on your feet um, because it's there for a reason. It's to protect your feet. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, to each his own. But the more and more callus they remove, if you want a super baby soft, that callus ain't going to do nothing but come back because the callus is trying to protect your feet. It's like, no, your feet are too soft. You're going to damage your feet. So let me go ahead and build this extra layer of skin to protect you. Um, But, yeah. Um, Avoid applying too much pressure when using pedicure bits as this can cause discomfort to the client. Okay, reducing dust. Different types of bits cause different sizes of dust particles to protect your health as well as as well as that of your coworkers and your clients. You should always wear an appropriate N95 rated dust mask when filing. Y'all hear that? A N95. So even though COVID has been going on, guys, we as nail techs always supposed to have to supposed it to have the N95 mask when um, filing. So um, I know everyone is probably tired of the um, the face mask and all of that, but nail techs, we always got to have it. If we're working, if we're filing, if we're using that um, monomer and that polymer, we need that mask. Well, I can do them all the way. I can do them all. Solutions to reduce dust. Use carbide or Swiss carbide bits. These shade heavier particles of product and direct them down toward the table. Use a dust extracting device either in or on your table. Be sure to clean filters after each client and exchange them with new ones regularly. For liquid and powder products, use drilling solutions with fine and extra fine diamond bits prior to polish or shining. 
not enough shine potential causes for having for not having enough shine on the surface of the product after filing or improper graduations of grits and not using buffing creams or solutions solutions to get more shine graduate grits from courses to finest uh, use either an extra fine standing sleeve or a hand file prior to using buffing cream. Finish with a camoise bit for best results. Heat. Improper filing techniques can cause heat to build up on the nail. Heat buildup can cause can be caused by applying too much pressure during filing due to speed being too low, by having the speed too high when using natural nail buffing bits or by leaving the bit in the same place for too long. Solutions to avoid heat buildup. Increase the speed. Apply less pressure during filing. The amount of pressure that you should apply down when filing on products is about the pressure used when you write your name with the pen. Lift the bit frequently during filing. Grab it. Grabbing occurs when the bit grabs the skin around the nail during filing. Potential causes of grabbing are that the bit is too close to the skin you are using, the bit, of an, the bit at an improper angle, or the bit is too large. Okay, it talks about solutions to avoid grabbing. You want to keep the bit at a par uh, parallel to the nail. Um, you want to anger the finger, not the bit. Um, and even when working on the cuticle area, um, <coughs> you'll want to angle the uh, finger down or um, however. Ensure that you're able to see the front edge of the bit. Remember that bits have two sides. We tend to look where the sides of the bit touches the nail while filing. It is the other side that is on the, near the skin that can grab and tear the skin. Use the proper size bit. Use bits with rounded ends such as safety style bits. Uh, micro shattering artificial nail enhancement products bond particles but leave tiny gaps of air between them think of a jar of marbles it might be as full as marbles as possible but the jar still has spaces between the marbles trauma vibration heat or damage to the product can cause particles to move increasing the size of the gaps in air between them this can break down the product and weaken the enhancement as nail enhancements age with wear they can become brittle and develop in tiny cracks this is called micro shattering. It may be caused by aggressive filing with or without an electric file. It is easier to cause micro shattering with an electric file. Some potential causes of micro shattering are improper speed of the machine during filing, poor quality or bent bits, using bents that are too coarse, using low quality and brittle nail enhancement products, holding the handpiece at the wrong angle and working too aggressively with the electric file. Solutions to avoid micro shattering. Use a slow speed, use proper filing techniques, keep the bit parallel to the table, use correct application techniques, make sure the bit is not bent, use a finer grit bit, and use quality electric files according to the manufacturer's instructions. Okay, we talked about the rings of fire, um, caused by holding at the wrong um, angle, by pressing down. Um, this causes the front cutting edge of the bit to cut into the damage of the natural nail, leaving a red mark and burning the plant. You should not need to press down hard when using an electric file. Um, it talks about solutions to avoid the rings of fire. We went over there about three times. Light pressure. Um, lift up. Don't stay in one spot. Um, reduce the speed. Uh, lift safety tips for electric filing. It is important that you understand and remember the following basic safety tips for electric filing. By doing so, you will ensure that your client has a good experience and that you produce beautiful results. Okay, so it just lifts uh, the safety tips for electric filing. And let's read this caution. A dangerous, a dangerous technique called the Russian manicure has appeared in videos online. The procedure show how to grind off the cuticle and skin in around the natural nail. This practice is very dangerous and can easily damage the nail. The cuticle is there for a reason. It protects the natural nail for da from damage and infection. Your duty as a nail professional is to always protect the health 
of the natural nail and the client's hands and feet. As a licensed nail professional, you are only permitted to work on healthy skin and nails. And then only for beautification purposes. Bottom line, if you live and work in Russia, you might do this dangerous procedure. However, if you live and work in the U- U.S., this dangerous practice is outside of the scope of your license. So otherwise saying don't do it. Because the Russian manicure, it really does. I don't know if you guys have seen how close they get up to um, your epinicium and removing all of that. Um, it looks good, no lie, but you got one time to uh, fuck up and there it is. There it is. And then um, I see a lot of pictures, like the nails would be so pretty, but then you see that little red mark from them. You know, cutting their client, and it just throws the whole thing off. All right, these are the procedures, guys. Um, like I said, we're going. I'm going to try to um, put most of them in this video. Um, I probably won't do all of them, but I know we will going to do the disinfecting the bits. Okay. And this right here is just showing you um, competency progress. Um, just showing you like if you're really doing what you need to do. Are you making sure you are comparing your electric files? Um, you remember the three things they said to um, keep in mind when choosing your electric file? What was it? Budget? Um, what was it? You guys remember? <sighs> God, what was it? Let's see. I forget, I forget, I forget. Um, budget was one. <laughs> I forgot. tuning in with me today um chapter 8 was um was a learning um it was learning um it's very learningful um chapter I feel like I learned a lot um still being in this industry um you're always going to be learning um there's never a time where you'll stop learning if you ever stop learning or feel like you done know everything uh, mm, you might want to go back to the drawing board and recheck yourself um but yeah i want to thank you guys once again um keep those vibrations high um hit the like button for me hit the like button for me subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel join the dripping nails dripping sauce squad See you guys next time.